Today we've got a nice integral that was suggested by a viewer. So in particular, we're going to evaluate the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power minus x plus 1 over 16x all over the square root of x. And that square root of x in the denominator, along with the fact that if you take the derivative of the square root of x, it puts a square root of x in the denominator, motivates our first substitution here, which is simply to let u equal the square root of x. But observe, that means that du is equal to dx over 2 times the square root of x. In other words, 2 times du is equal to dx over the square root of x. So let's see, let's box this off here and just observe that that's going to take care of this dx over the square root of x term. And now we can rewrite this as, well, I'm going to put a 2 out front. And then we've got the integral from zero, 0 to infinity. The bounds of integration do not change here. And then we're going to have what? Well, it's going to be e to the power minus u squared plus 1 over 16 times u squared du. So something like that. But in fact, we're not just going to evaluate this integral. We're going to evaluate a whole family of integrals built off of this kind of second form that we've seen here. And in particular, those integrals are going to have the following general form. So let's define them right here. So we're going to set, maybe I'll call it f of a, b. There'll be two parameter integrals. So this is going to be equal to the integral from a to b of e to the minus and then we'll have ax squared plus b squared over x squared. And now observe that what we have right here is exactly this with a equal to 1 and b equal to, let's see, it would be a quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and write down here that this is going to be 2 times f of 1 comma 1 quarter. And then once we get a formula for f of a, b, we'll just plug it in there. Okay, so let's see what we might do at this stage. Well, what I like here is the fact that x times 1 over x is 1, but x squared is x squared, and 1 over x squared is, well, 1 over x squared. So that motivates the following little observation, and that is if we take ax minus b over x and we square it, we're going to get ax squared, or sorry, I should say a squared x squared. I forgot a squared here. And then, let's see, minus 2 times a times b, and then plus b squared over x squared. So something like that. But now, notice all of this inside of the exponent means that we can do something really nice, and that is we can write e to the ax minus b over x squared is equal to e to the minus a squared x squared. And then let's see, plus 2 times a times b, and then minus b squared over x squared. But now this e to the 2 times a times b is essentially just a constant. We can factor it out. So we have e times 2 times a times b times e to the minus a squared x squared plus b squared over x squared. Now you might say, well, why did we do all this? Well, notice this term right here that I have underlined in orange is exactly our integrand here. And this thing over here, which is potentially a little bit nicer, is just a constant times our integrand meaning that we can go up here and make the following observation, and that is that f of a, b is simply equal to e to the minus 2 a, b times the integral from 0 up to infinity of e to the minus a, x minus b over x all squared dx. Great. So again, that's just by moving this blue underline e to the 2 a, b over to the left-hand side of the equation. Okay, nice. And now what I want to do is hold on to this version of f of a, b for just a second. Keep in mind we're going to come back to it. 
and then I'm going to also maybe do another substitution to see if I can manipulate this a little bit more. And my next substitution will be essentially to switch the role of x and 1 over x. And we can do that as follows. So let's set, we'll use t for our variable. So we'll set t equal to, let's see, b over a times x. But that means that x is equal to b over a times t. But of course, that means that dx is equal to negative b uh, over a times t squared dt. And of course, we're going to use that to replace our dx term. Okay, so let's see. That's going to leave us with the following. We'll have e to the minus 2ab. That's our constant out front. We don't really need to worry about that. We can also factor out this minus b over a out of the whole thing. And then we'll be left with the integral of, let's see, we'll have e to what? Well, notice that this a times x will simply be b over t. I think that's pretty clear. So we've got b over t and then minus a times t, all squared. But now this is going to be all over t squared dt. And now what about the bounds of integration? Well, let's observe that as x approaches 0 from above, t is going to be approaching infinity. So we've got an infinity down here. And similarly, we've got a 0 up there. But I'm going to take this minus sign out front and use it to change the order of the bounds of integration. And now it's going to go from 0 to infinity. So we've got something like that going on. Now, I'm going to underline this version of f of a, b as well. Okay, so now let's add together this purple underlined and this red underlined version of our function f of a, b. And before I do that, I'm going to observe that I can just change these t's back to x's as they're just playing the role of a dummy variable. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to replace all of those t's with x's. And then furthermore, I've got a denominator of a here. So I might as well give myself a denominator of a here as well by multiplying by a over a. And now I'm set to add the purple part and the red part together pretty easily. That'll give me 2 times f of a b equals e to the minus 2 a b all over a. That's kind of my common term here. And then I'll have the integral from 0 to infinity, this exponential term, which is also common for both of these terms. It might look different, but notice it's just off by a minus sign that's being squared. But a minus sign being squared is obviously not changing anything. And then let's see, from the purple underline, we pick up an a. And then from the red underline, we pick up a b over x squared. Good. And now let's observe that this bit right here that's being squared in the exponent, this ax minus b over x, if we set that equal to u, then the stuff over here outside of the exponential function is simply du. So that's nice because that's going to take us essentially all the way home. We have e to the minus 2ab over a, and then our integral of e to the minus u squared du. And what are we integrating over? Well, as x approaches 0 from above, that's going to give us minus infinity. So that's what the u will approach. And then similarly, we've got just a plus infinity over here. But that's exactly the Gaussian integral, which we've evaluated on the channel several times. And what does it give us? It gives us the square root of pi. So in the end, our value of f of a, b, or I guess it should be 2 times f of a, b, is the square root of pi e to the minus 2ab over a. Nice. But now we're ready to finish everything off. Notice we have 2 f of 1 comma 4. So in the end, that's going to give us the square root of pi. And then we'll have e to the 1 half, well, the negative 1 half. Notice a is 1 and b is 1 quarter. So that's how we get that there. But e to the minus half is the same thing as the square root of e in the denominator. So in the end, we have the square root of pi over e. And that's a good place to stop.